Hello, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala. This is Youth Tonight we're talking about Horn of Africa and Central Africa. As you know, there are many crises in Africa. I have a, I have a guest from Congo, Mr. Louise, and I have another guest and from South East Africa country, Djibouti, and Fatih Mohamed, the Union on Salvation National Vice Chairman. Welcome, gentlemen, to this program. Thank as, you. as far as we know, Africa is still, there are many, many worries in Horn of Africa and Central Africa and lack of development. And we, have, we are not only highlighting the problem in the Horn of Africa, but we want to also to get solution for the Africa it itself. Welcome to the program, both of you guys. Can you hear uh, Mr. And Fatih Mohammed from Birmingham. Fatih, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Brother, welcome to the program. Tonight we're talking about the many crises in Africa. We, we have been talking and talked uh, last a few weeks, um, Egypt crisis and uh, Somali crisis, mm -hmm. Eritrea crisis. And tonight we're talking about uh, Congo and also Djibouti. Can you tell us, um, we have heard a lot of incidents has been taking place in Djibouti. A lot of people have been arrested and uh, there are a lot of complaints from the Djiboutian uh, community. So as you are vice chairman of Union of Salvation Nation, can you tell us what's happening in Djibouti right now? Okay, Bro Brother Duale Yusuf and... The line is very bad, although I, I, I'm from Birmingham and you call it from London. We can, uh, the, sorry. Well, I can make up. We, we, can, uh, we can hear very loud and clear. Uh, so if you keep talking, that would be great. Okay. And if you could please repeat the question, because from your side, I did not hear properly what you asked. I have so. said we have had a lot of uh, um, um, complaints coming from the Djibouti and the diaspora, which I met a few days ago. So as you are German of Union of Salvation Nation and, and the vice German, and can you tell us what's happening now in Djibouti? Okay. Thank you very much. And first of all, I'm the vice chairman of an... Uh, USN UK support group, which is in a transitional and uh, support group, right. and and we are basically a support group for and um, and the opposition, the main opposition or the only opposition party in Djibouti, which is called in French Union pour le Salut National, which in English means Union for National Salvation. Right. And yeah, what, yes. what we what we want to, I mean, explain what's happening now. A lot of people are making a lot of complaint and tell us as you yes. are the part of that community. Okay. What is happening right now in Djibouti is we had an election mm. and the government proposed and for 10 years the opposition did not participate in any election in Djibouti. Only the president and his party were the only candidate for the election. Mm. So for 10 years, we were saying it's not possible to participate in the election in Djibouti while the president is the one who held the elections, he is the one who's counting, and he is the one who's basically um, making the, the decisions who win and who lose. But we've been forced in national community, based. we participated we participate in 2018, the election has passed peacefully and nicely. Mm. And we, the Union for National Salvation, has won outright with over 80% of the population. However, what happened on the night, for 12 years, the government could not release the, count, the voting count. In the morning, they did release, and they did release and said they've won about 40, 49% of the votes, which they're taking 80% of the seats. And 
What happened as well, we've requested the government to release all the counting ballots and the United Nations, sorry, the United States, the Union, the European Union and the African Union requested the government to release all the ballot papers for the world to witness who win and who, who lost. Mm. Since then, they have imprisoned everyone and one of us died in prison and diaspora guy who lives, who used to live in Birmingham, my friend Yahya, he is still in prison for no reason. He has been basically, he has been uh, tortured in the prisons and he has requested an, uh, help and for the doctors that has not, has come, did, did not come forward. So that is actually what is happening in Djibouti. The president a dictatorship is happening in Djibouti and has been happening for the last 30 six years. Mm. That is point black a resume of what's happening in Djibouti. Right. Um, some of the um, Djibouti and diaspora have told me a few days ago when I met in Belgium, um, some ulama, um, the top ulama of Djibouti has been arrested for the last few years and, and uh, uh, there, there, are, there are a lot of people have been even hurt. That's what they told me. So what do you know about that incident? What happened and, and in, during the elections and what happened, the ulama said, and there was three of them said, and in these current situations, what is happening in Djibouti, and we're proposing the populations of Djibouti to vote for the opposition. And since then, they become person no grata. The governor of Djibouti imprisoned all the ulama, the well-known of ulama, and Abdurrahman Bashir, Abdurrahman Barkhad Goth, and, and, and the other Sugi, and who is the, the leader of Modern, mm -hmm. and has all been on prison. And they're still in prison. And what happened in Brussels, and what, what happened previously, and there was an, a conference in, that was held in London, and for Somalis, for Somalia. President Djibouti came in London with, with demonstrated and, and a big demonstration happened. What happened again in Brussels and last Monday, there was a conference for Somalia. Again, the president of Djibouti came. So about 100 of us, which I was leading as the vice chairman, because the chairman did not come, and I was leading. 100 of us left UK, went to Brussels, and basically told the world that this, that, dictatorship, that dictatorship is happening in Djibouti, we need help. Our opposition party has been and, 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 and dismissed or closed, and our, all our, our opposition part and, and leaders has been imprisoned, and that is what's happening. So we, we were telling the world, come and help us and to revive democracy in Djibouti. Thank you very much. Can you, can you stay on the line while I have a guest here? You, you have heard okay. what Fath had said. Um, we complain about mm. only the big powers around the world, but mm. when it comes in the leaders in Africa, they don't treat their people. What can you say that? Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you, you know, uh, for having me on uh, Star TV, and uh, it's really important to have this kind of uh, communication. Absolutely. Because no one is going to give Africa a real voice, the voice that speaks the truth, because True. that's what we hear. Uh, what's happening uh, in Djibouti is not uncommon. It's, what, it's part of what's happening throughout Africa. Uh, the uh, elections are not organized to give freedom to the people or mm. to solve the problems of the people. Elections are organized as a way to either to retain power or to share power amongst a minority uh, of our African elites. Mm. Uh, we call them the African elite bourgeoisie. How, and, uh, how are we going to stop this kind? I mean, people have no rights mm. to say, I mean, in Europe, you know, mm. you live in this country, mm. you're a British citizen, mm. you, you go out, you mm. cast your vote, you choose the leader you want. Yeah. But in Africa, th mm. this is our leaders, this is our fathers. Yeah. Uh, who's supposed to be care of us? Yeah. You know, if they want to remain 15, 20 years, yeah. well, Tony Blair and Cameron cannot remain, you know. Yeah. Cameron came by vote and is leaving by vote. Yeah. But why Africa leaders doesn't accept that? Yeah. Um, we have to realize one thing. Uh, since the 60s, uh, there has been a struggle uh, 
mm. a formidable struggle that shook Africa and the world. But in that struggle, is only the tiny section of our African population, we call the African petit bourgeoisie, that has won the right to contest for elections and to be elected into office and to mm. become prime minister, president, and so on. The people of Africa have not won the right to be in power, mm. which means when there are elections, it's not for the African people, it doesn't matter in Djibouti or anywhere in Africa to be in power. Mm. It's for that tiny minority to be in power. So if you, you represent uh, the people and you go to elections, there is no guarantee that if you, if you win the election, that you will be in power. Because the bottom line is that the people should not be in power. Mm. Only the minority should be in power. But here in Europe, the difference is, is that uh, the elections are organized uh, for the bourgeoisie to keep power. So which means that it doesn't matter who runs, uh, who competes in elections, the winner is always somebody who is going to serve imperialism, the bourgeoisie. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying? I understand. If you are from the, uh, the, uh, the conservative, if you win, you serve the same British ruling class. If you are a liberal Democrat, you win, you're going to serve the same bourgeoisie. If you're a Labour Party, you win, you're going to serve the same bourgeoisie. But in Africa, that's not uh, the case. In Africa, different leaders represent different foreign interests. This one represents the French, the other uh, leader represents the Americans, another represents the British, the other represents the Belgian, and, and maybe, you know, our new... How, how, so we, how are we going to change when our leaders behave yep. like that, you know, and uh, we don't complain, you know. We can't yep. criticize. I mean, yep. the West, they have, yep. they have a media to criticize the leader. Mm -hmm. But in Africa, if yep. we try to criticize, yep. um, you know, they take against, you know, against you and they try to crack down you and to kill you. Yep. And how are we going to change this system yep. of one man's rule in Africa yep. rather than the choice of the people? How yep. are we going to change that? Yeah, we have to, to let that people understand that uh, democracy is primarily a form of state. Mm. Democracy is a form also of repression. Basically, for example, you remember uh, the countries you call this democracy, but they colonized us for more than 100 years. Were they democracy? From their point of view, yes. Where they oppress us in Africa and around the world, they call them so democracies. Mm. For their democracy is to oppress Africa. Now, the African leaders, when they, uh, they achieve power, they see the democracy to continue the oppression of the African masses. Mm. So democracy is not, I do what I want to do. Democracy uh, for the people must be the end of foreign domination, but also the end of minority rule. When I say minority rule, the African petit bourgeoisie rules must end. So the people must come to power. That is the way uh, the people you know, can appreciate democracy. But it must be a new state. The states we have in Africa are not our state. They are the state imposed on us by colonialism. That's why those states and our democracy don't go together. We need a new, new state. That's definitely no new state, people's state, no democracy. It Absolute. will not work. Absolutely. Um, Fatih, you can come back again. Um, what is your demands right now? You make the demonstration, you express uh, so many things, but what is your demand as a, a, a Djiboutians? Our, our demand is very clear and simple. The people rules the land. It's not, a man does not rule the land, but the people of the land has to rule the land. So what we're demanding is the fair elections. We have been called for, to participate in the elections and the winners has to rule the land. That is basically what we, that is, that is the game of the democracy. Mm. We got a ballot, we ask the people to vote who they want to be, and uh, who, who they want to rule them. They choose, and that is the final, the final the, the word is from the people. That is exactly what we want. There is no more and there is no less what we want. Right. If, if, if the leader providing you uh, uh, normal services like schools, hospitals, um, providing jobs, so what's your complaint? Say it again. If the leader if your leader, if, if your leader is providing, you know, security for the country, providing jobs, providing uh, uh, basic 
uh, like healthcare and, and, and schooling. Yeah. And so what is your problem? You have said that uh, we our, need... Uh, um, our, 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 problem, our problem is what you've mentioned. If the leaders are just, and the people have decided that they don't want democracy, they want that leader to rule, we will accept because we are the people. If the majority of the people want one ruler to rule them for 200 years, not a problem. But what is happening in Djibouti, we as the people want democracy. And we need democracy and we request democracy. So we want to play the games. The government wanted to play the games. We want the games to be played in a fair and orderly manner. That is why. And if I come to the schools and stuff, there's no schools in Djibouti. There is what we call schools, but no one, no one get, a, a, get a good education in, in Djibouti. There is, no, there is no as well help in Djibouti. If people that can't pay it get help. People who can basically pay their kids to go to university in France and other French colonies are able to study. Not, not people like myself, people from and the lower class, middle class, or the working class cannot afford education in Djibouti. And that is the point. Um, what, what comment can you add? Yeah, I'm just going to say that it's really important for people who are watching us uh, to realize that uh, when we, we say uh, democracy, uh, it's really uh, uh, incomplete, you know, because democracy must mean we have the power over our land. We have the power of our, over our economics. But above all, it means there is a, a united African economy that can secure lives for all of us. And that this cannot happen within uh, the, the current system of domination of Africa. We must achieve African liberation as a part of the struggle to be a real democratic society. Mm. But we have not achieved African liberation. There is no place in Africa that is free from domination, from a foreign forces, in, you know, from a... IMF from uh, Africa, um, uh, free from uh, uh, stock, London Stock Exchange, you know, free from all these multinational companies. There is no place in Africa that is free. Mm. Um, Fatih, what's your last message uh, to send your fellow um, Djiboutians? Because, w as you know, um, gunfighting doesn't cre create any peace and stability in Africa. Look in Somalia, um, when uh, the leader of Somalia refused to listen to Somali people, what had happened. You know, they overthrew me and they fought each other. Now Somalia at the bottom of every uh, problem. And Somalia the, is example of everything. So do you want to take that route or you want to say, look, uh, we want a democracy, no. we want a peace and stability among ourselves, but we want to change the leader? Yeah, now, and... Um Democracy and the rules of a and of, of vote is, 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 is not bullet. There is two solutions. There is the, so, the solution of Somalia where there is the bullet and the AK-47 rules. Mm. And in Djibouti, we are a peaceful nation. We want the ballot to rule. And the message, my final message is, we're telling the dictatorship in Djibouti, we are, no, we are going nowhere. We are in Djibouti, we are outside of Djibouti, we are everywhere, and we are the, we are the stones of Djibouti who want democracy in Djibouti. And we will have it, democracy in Djibouti. Not by bullets, not by AK-47, but by the will of the power of people, we will have democracy in Djibouti. And that is my final word, we will win. And our land, our government will be ruled by the populace of Djibouti, citizen of Djibouti. Okay, thank you very much. And we hope you uh, join us next, next uh, uh, program. But tonight still we're talking um, about Horn of Africa and African problems. The leaders of Africans come into power and they would like to stay forever as much as they can. Like Somalia, Mohamed Sibiad Barakim, 1996, 1969, and he left the power with gunpoint. His other leaders, many leaders, came to Africa for normal process, but they left it, gun power as Congo. 
Um, before we end uh, um, the talk or this show about the Djibouti, if you are Djibouti and listening tonight, call us tonight. What you what what is your grief and what is your concern? We have heard so many noises coming from you when I have met to you two days ago in Belgium. And the number is 0203397. 2095. Um, is somebody on the line? Um, you can see, um, still, we're talking about Djibouti. Yeah. We come shortly. Um, yeah. Can I to say Congo. something about Djibouti? Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, Djibouti is where we have a French military base. Mm. And uh, this is also where the United States has uh, the headquarters for Africa. Mm. And uh, you can't be free when you're occupied. So you can have elections, but what's the meaning of elections when you are under occupation? So it seems to me that uh, our people in Djibouti have to begin to ask for the end of occupation of Djibouti as a part of uh, achieving uh, freedom. But uh, that's only one part. But uh, we already convinced the history of Africa already shows that uh, Africa uh, cannot achieve uh, freedom uh, as a fragmented uh, 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 continent as mm -hmm. it is now, but as a united uh, continent, and uh, that's uh, this is part of the challenge that people need to take on. Uh, okay, um, there's one brother, Ahmed, um, is gonna tell us who is he. And okay. um, welcome to the program, Ahmed. Hello, thank you, uh, Doali. Uh, thank you for the um, for coming tonight and talking to us. But um, as you know, Africa have no voices, and uh, Star TV is part of people's voice. So we we would like to have more Somalians to speak with us and speak about their concerns. So welcome to the program. I hope you are Djib Djiboutian and 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 would like to be Djibouti, one of the best country in Africa. Thank you very much. Uh my name is Ahmed Johari, and I'm the spokesman of the, the US and UK Support Committee. Right. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity of expressing ourselves as Djibouti and opposition supporters in the, in the diaspora. Right. Let me first send my condolences uh, to the family of the first martyr, Mahmoud Elmi uh, Riyale. He uh, died recently in the central jail of Gabod in Djibouti. Right. He was actually uh, in jail uh, with no reason. Uh, may Allah give his uh, grand eternal pleasure and paradise, and may Allah uh, bless his family, relatives, friends, uh, U.S. and party, and the whole nation of Djibouti. Mm, Apart mean, from that, Daali, yes, uh, I'd like to congratulate first of the organizers of uh, the demonstration in uh, Brussels that we've met uh, together uh, last Monday and all participants, young, old, men, women, uh, human rights activists and everyone. Uh, I'd like to say actually the, uh, the problem in Djibouti you may have heard from my previous uh, speaker uh, and I'd like to mention some of the uh, objectives uh, why the Djibouti and diaspora uh, demonstrated uh, the presence of uh, President Geller in London uh, a couple of months ago and recently uh, uh, on Monday uh, in, in, uh, in Brussels. The reason was actually showing uh, our support for our people back home, mm. whom are uh, actually denigrated by the government that is led by uh, Mr. Gale. We condemn uh, the horrible actions against the people uh, that are uh, actually not having any right uh, in Djibouti, when, whatever it may be, when they wanted to say something, they don't have that right to do it. Mm. So we denounce all sorts of uh, humiliation and depriving people's right, uh, such the right of free thought and thinking and making a political choice and uh, the freedom of expression. Do you know, Djibouti is 
uh, one of the first country in the world, uh, although it's a very small country, uh, its population is less than a million people. And you can uh, also note that the president, Gele, is among the richest, <coughs> if he's sorry, if he's not the only one, but he's among the richest men in the world. Uh, who rule countries uh, in the world now. Recently, uh, the president has made a statement and he gave interviews to uh, VOA radio and BBC radio, and he said there is some uh, contested uh, uh, from the opposition side and they are not happy with the result of the last uh, election in February this year. Mm. And we will start a negotiation. Right. So th not that negotiation uh, started, but unfortunately it stopped already because uh, the government uh, negotiator, they made uh, promises which was not... Uh, kept, uh, such as, for instance, they have uh, agreed both sides, as the spokesman of USN mm. uh, mentioned in uh, many times. Number one, releasing of the prisoners. You know, Mr. Daale and the whole world know nowadays that the, in, in, in Djibouti there is no democracy. There is no freedom of speech. Uh, most of the people are... Uh, those who are intellectuals, such as ulama, uh, the scholars of the country, uh, Sheikh Abdurrahman Bashir, Sheikh Abdurrahman Barkhadgod, and Sheikh Tiri, uh, they are, and other uh, human rights activists and journalists, they are in jail and they are now in, 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 in prison. The government promised to release all political prisoners. That promise is not kept. Uh, the other point of, of, of the agreement points was actually stopping the hostility against the USN uh, members and USN uh, supporters. You have uh, probably noted that uh, Mr. Mohammed Dahir Roble, Dr. Mohammed Dahir Roble, uh, his uh, nationality is being taken away because. Uh, the government uh, uh, seemingly uh, described he should be uh, a danger for the country. But he's, uh, he's one of the uh, intellectuals in the country who help, who work for the uh, humanitarian uh, programs and educational programs mm. and who promote uh, the development of the country, actually. But unfortunately... Uh, the government started to chase after every single individual, no matter their gender, actually, uh, and no matter their age, whether they are young or old or uh, middle age, they uh, have been uh, experienced uh, very uh, bad treatment uh, from from the country, from from the government side. Okay, Ahmed. Um, um, let me hold you there. Uh. Um, what, right. is, what is your final message? Because there is a lot of number uh, on the line now and they want to make their comment as well. Um, what is your final message to your government, to, to your fellow um, Djiboutians who are listening tonight or will listen to you might be somewhere internet, inshallah, for the future? Uh, thank you, Dohali. Again, I, I would like to say our people back home in Djibouti, we, uh, I want to say that we are with them and they will never be left alone, and they are not alone for this battle of uh, regaining their own freedom, because there is no freedom at all, to my personal view. Mm. Uh, that is one thing. The other thing is for the diaspora. Uh, I would say there is no uh, other uh, means of doing, of restating uh, the freedom. Mm. Uh, but there is... Uh, different means of uh, going different paths, uh, of, of working to uh, get your freedom. Uh, I 
personally not welcome to any kind of uh, vandalism or any kind of uh, some sort of uh, aggression or that sort of thing. Okay. But I, help, I I'm, I'm afraid that the government side is the one who uh, incites uh, the hate and and the aggression and and vandalism. Okay. Our ulama, they are not terrorists. The terrorist is the one who oppressed people. Mm. The terrorist is the one who oppressed and deprived people's rights. Okay. Right? So okay. my fellow citizens, my fellow uh, brothers and sisters in the diaspora, I would say let us uh, be all together against uh, yeah. this transgression and oppression. Okay. And let us call together okay. for a uh, peaceful uh, change. Okay. Thank peaceful you. Peaceful change. Okay. Thank you very much, that Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you very much for your call. I um, interrupt you because there are a lot of people. I would like to have um, you, 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 your comments, but um, there are a number of people are on the line and uh, we will let everybody to have to say their, their words. So thank you very much um, for coming tonight and make your comments. That was great comment. And if anybody is listening now and want to be joined with us, please join us. Okay, I could have Am I the next? Yeah. Yes, well, Allah, you are on the air. You are on the air. Please make your comments. Oh, yes. Um, what? Okay, Can you load down your value, please? Can you load down your value? Yes, sorry. Put zero. I put zero. Room. Your value, put zero, please, before you speak to me. And I speak on the line, not on the TV, please. Talk to me now. Yeah, talk yes, to me. You? Yeah, oh, you yeah, are, and uh, good. Yes, all right then. Good evening. Um, my name is Abel Osman. Hebo. Um, I'm Abla. What's your name? Hello? Abla, okay. Abla, where are you calling yeah, from? Yeah, Abla. Where well, I'm calling from Nottingham. N Nottingham? And I would like, yes. Okay, go on. Yes, I would like, basically, um, I just want to also say my view about my country, Djibouti. Right. What it is, is basically, I came in Europe at a young age. And what I realized is basically how the Western country is. So um, what it is, is when I went back to my country, I saw what happened there. And it, just, it was really painful. And what, what also is, is when I realized how the people living there and how the people suffering there. Mm. Well, the, the, the president or those telling that they've got the power, they do have the power because they misuse the power. And what it is, is basically they've forgotten that we're living in the first century. Mm. That everything century. has been changed. And the, the people has the power now. Mm. And I also was in the demonstration in Brussels. And I was really pleased. Okay, to see okay, okay, hang on, sister. Um, l let me stop you there. What are you going to say? I mean, she's talking about she went to back home and uh, she saw a very uh, uh, difficult condition that people mm -hmm. have been facing inside the country. Mm -hmm. Might be there's jobless, uh, might be there's mm -hmm. no facilities, there's mm -hmm. no basic services mm -hmm. for the community as mm -hmm. we have here. I mm -hmm. mean, Britain, we can't, we, we cannot pretend it like in Britain, but um, mm -hmm. if you lived in the West and mm -hmm. back to Africa, you see the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. see the difference. So. Yeah. Uh, that's what I've been saying from the beginning. Mm. Uh, we, we have to come to terms that uh, Africa is a, is a colonized continent. Mm. So when you are a colonized people, it means you live under colonial conditions. Colonial conditions mean that uh, you don't have access to basic uh, facilities so, like mm. healthcare, housing, education, basic freedom, you know, freedom to assembly freedom to speak of, of, of speech, things like that, women's rights, uh, right? No, it no doesn't press. exist. That's what 
colonial conditions means. Mm. It means that uh, the entire nation is oppressed. The only difference now is that since the 60s, the independence of Africa, a tiny portion of our population has been allowed to have some kind of right, mm. some oh. kind of power. And these are president, the prime minister, people like that. They're the only people with right. Most of us, if we want to have real right to be respected as human beings, we must recognize we are not free. Mm. And then continue the struggle for national liberation. Not the struggle for just election. Election is just a tactic. You know, how to share power between the ruling class. It's not for the people to enjoy freedom. The people have to un will enjoy freedom if we come to power, which means we have a new state. That state we have in Djibouti okay. is not our state. In fact, even Djibouti is a creation of colonialism. Okay. See? Uh, let's go back to Abla. Abla, um, you have talked about yeah. there's no basic services in Djibouti. So what's your mind now? What, what is your message tonight? Oh, basically, my aim as a Djiboutian who has grown up in a Western country, I just want a change. The change is, first of all, as the message... First of all, is you know to make because the most main the mo the main point is when you see there is a big gap between the rich and the poor. Mm. So the main issue is you know first of all is water. We haven't got any water in our country. Wow. While well, the president and those behind him washing with the what how how do you call you know um clean water a clean water they they washing themselves with the clean water while the poor people haven't got any water that is my main point mm. thank you the Th second point okay that's colonial conditions okay okay keep keep going we haven't got much time left so we give everybody All one right. minute so keep going okay so i just want to tell the Jewishian people who living in back home I just want to tell them that they are not alone, mm. that we are with them. And every night, every second, every minute, we're feeling the situation that they're living in. So there will be a day that the change will come. Okay, excellent. And we'll thank you very much. Thank, thank, you, thank you for calling us. Um, you said, she said yeah. um, there's not even a water. Yeah. And the presence and all others, yes. they have got, uh, yeah. uh, uh, they, they have, can access as much as they can in the water. Yeah. They have a freedom water, they've yeah. got everything. Yeah. And, the, and the people has been left over. Mm. And it's not only Djibouti, but, mm. you know, from where you come from, from yeah. where I come yeah. from, from yeah. every part of Africa, yeah. leaders that are enjoying yeah. the life. We come back soon. Um, if you are listening, if you are from Djiboutians, please call us. We've got, you have got the last caller. We need the last caller. After that, we go and to Congo. So if you are listening to our program tonight, we're talking about the crisis of Africa. But tonight we're talking Horn of Africa, especially Djibouti, because we have got rights to say what we want. I cast my vote here in UK. So why we couldn't cast our votes in our country back home? Our leaders must understand this, those countries, they rule, they don't belong to the people of the country. They must understand that. That is the reality. That is the 21st century. The people have got power. It's not the pullets. It's not the tanks. It's not about any money. It's about the people. And the legacy they leave in the African today, mm. leaders, mm. are terrible, you know. Oh, yeah. Massacre, killing oh, yes. people. Oh, yes. that's, that's why they're scared for their, for their people. Yes. So they must surround a number of, of, of police or, or arms. Yes. You know? yes. And we need yes. to talk to the yes. army themselves. Yes. Yes. We have yes. to put conscious, you know, yeah. how they allow, yeah. how they allow these, you know, soldiers or the policemen or security men to kill their brothers. It's yeah. not the top the problem, it's also the soldiers and that's the system they leave yes. is, is wrecked. And now it's time for change. That's what, what we, that's what we're saying. We're saying the system that is in Djibouti, in Somalia, Ethiopia, Kenya, the whole of Africa, yes. and here too, is the same system that our fathers and mothers and grandparents fought against, mm. you know, decades, centuries ago. It's the same system. And that system has a state. Mm. A state is organized violence. And it doesn't matter who comes to power. As long as you come to that state, you will advise you to do. Maintain the status quo. But make sure colonial conditions continue. They can continue to loot Africa and oppose it because the state is there to deal with the people. Listen uh, to those conditions. That's why 
uh, uh, not the police, which is militarized in Africa, the way they, they, they kill us, because that has been created to kill us. So when you come here, you know, and they make you up, because they would not look up Germans, we fought by the locals, us. We never uh, country like the Germans did, for example, because which are also carried here. Okay. We are. The, yeah, there's a, uh, one call. Welcome to the program. Hello? Hello, you're on air. We can hear loud, loud and clear. Keep your volume down, please. I can't hear you otherwise. Yeah, hello. Hear you loud and clear. Can you make your comments? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, I say salam alaikum. Salam. Uh, I'm calling from uh, Leicester, uh, Mahmoud. Right, welcome uh, to the. What I say uh, is uh, because. Uh, about everything, mm. but what I need is, uh, uh, I know the problem in Djibouti, but what I want to say is, uh, I know Martin Luther King in America say a hard dream, and Malcolm X say we have to wake up, because when you have dream, that means you're sleeping. So what I'm saying is, the uh, population of Djibouti, they have to wake up mm. to say no. We are, we are the game is over. Mm. The uh, the party who held the power in Djibouti, they are for 36 years. Mm. Uh, so we say wake up and don't let them do it again. Mm. That's what only things I can say because every everybody now. They are uh, educated, uh, you know what I mean? So everything changed now. So what I'm, what I'm saying is we have to wake up and change this country because we have got <coughs> everything. Our God give us plenty of things. So we have to do, we have to uh, explore it. We have to use them because we, we, I know no water, no power, nothing but we have got plenty uh, resources not natural resources so we have to use them we have to use our brain we have to i i say no i know i'm talking all africa we are thickness and killers so i say we have to change that we have to think about the, about the future about the 100 coming Mm. Because I know in this country, the people thinking if they are 60 years old and they're thinking about next six years, you know what I mean? So we have to think about the future. And we know that uh, my friend is with you, Ali. He's talking the power in Africa, they are come from, you know what I mean, uh, the colonialism. Mm. That's true. Because... They only change the color because be before it was the white people and now they are the black people. Okay. But on the, on, uh, on the man is the same. Okay. So we say we need we need to change. We have to think about us. I don't. Okay. I don't. Bahamu, when I hear ba Bahamu, thank I you. Mahamu, thank you. Let me stop you there. Um, we, ha we, we plan to talk tonight um, two countries, Djibouti and Congo. So thank you very much for your call and your comments. Let's come back now. Uh, we don't take any more calls from uh, Djibouti site. We are going, we need to talk about um, Congo. Um, Congo is one of the biggest country in mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the Congo. What's yeah. happening in the Congo and mm -hmm. where is Congo? and what the people of Congo are living right now. Tell us about it. Yeah, when you speak about any of the African countries, mm. you, you know, you, you don't have to, to name it in the same conditions everywhere. Mm. You know, uh, what just our people have described in Djibouti, that's exactly what you have in the Congo. Mm. Uh, uh, there are Af arbitrary... We, we have heard uh, six million have been killed yep. in Congo for yep. the last 18 years. Yep. And yep. the size land of of Congo is bigger than Europe. Yeah, it's uh, the size of uh, Western Europe. Uh, basically, uh, 2 million uh, 345 kilometer, uh, square kilometer. Wow, 2 million. But uh, the size of Congo only speaks about the size of Africa. Mm. 
Mm. Congo is only big because Africa is big. You True. know, 30, square, uh, 30 million square kilometers. Wow. And uh, that's one thing uh, we need to be aware of it. Because uh, one thing is... How many, uh, how many countries it can fit if we put in the Western countries? Uh, I know Congo is uh, 80 times bigger than Belgium. You can fit Spain, Britain, Germany, uh, France, uh, Holland, uh, Spain, all the, Portugal, all of them can fit in the Congo. And I know uh, you can put the United States, uh, you can put Canada, you can put all of Europe, uh, mm. China, you can put them in Africa. They all fit there with spare, mm. room to spare. Wow. You know, so Africa is big. And as you've been said before, full of resources. So what's, what's happening in the Congo, basically, it's... Uh, Tell us about the leader who's ruling now, yeah. the leaders before. Yeah. And why, why, why the people of Congolese are you know, suffering so many years. Yeah. Uh, what's happening in the Congo basically today is uh, what we call a war without end. Mm. And it's a, call, a, call, a war without end because the uh, imperialist countries, uh, United States, uh, EU, uh, UK, all these countries, Canada, Australia, all of them, uh, they want to loot the resources of, of, uh, of Congo and they also have... They want to have a, a monopoly. They want to achieve hegemony, particularly the United States. The United States wants to control, we decide who loots Congo. Nobody should loot Congo more than them. So they have uh, intervened uh, in 1996. Uh, they created a war to overthrow Mobutu, who was there uh, for 32 years. Mobutu has been put in power since 1965. Mm. But before Mobutu comes in 1965, the, the CIA and the U.S. government used Mobutu to overthrow the legitimate, the genuine government of the people in the Congo in the 60s that was represented under the leadership of Dishu Mumba. Mm. But Dishu Mumba wanted to build a new Africa, a new Congo, a Congo where the benefits, uh, basically the resource of Congo will benefit the people. A Congo that will be free, a Congo that will unite with the rest of Africa to build a united, strong Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the kind of Africa he wanted to build with Kwame Nkrumah and other leaders of the time. And the United States attacked him. They used Mobutu and other collaborators. They overthrew his government and murdered him in a very vicious way. They cut his body into pieces and put that in a sulfuric acid. And uh, that's how, you know, he, he has no thumb, basically. They killed him like that. And uh, from that time, the United States has maintained control over the Congo through the collaborators like Mobutu and others. Mm. And uh, with the fall of the Soviet Union in uh, 89, uh, Mobutu was no longer necessary. And also, Mobutu has been there for, for a long time, and uh, the United States uh, felt that uh, uh, a new type of uh, uh, leaders need to be in place. Not necessarily, I would not say new type, no. Some, some, something revolutionary or good for the people. But uh, Mobutu has to go because they have new plans. They want to get to the resources. There is no more Cold War. Now the U.S. Uh, wants to have complete hegemony of the resources uh, in Africa. What resources that Congo has? Uh, we're talking about... Causes all these problems. Uh, I would say uh, every... When you look at uh, what they call chemical... Uh, the chemistry periodical table, you know, where they put all the uh, chemical... Uh, we've, got, we've, got, we've got two minutes, so squeeze okay. as much as you so can. So basically, uh, the mineral uh, that is causing most of the war, the current war, the six million people have died, is called coltan. Coltan is used to Coltans, make... Coltan, yeah. Coltans, it's used to make cell phone, laptop, iPhones, uh, computers, uh, spacecraft. Uh, it's used in the medicine to make uh, hips, you know, artificial mm -hmm. hips. And mm -hmm. It's used extensively, but it's a very good material to control the heat in our electronics. Mm. And uh, without that, you won't be able to make laptops and iPhones and things like that. It will heat so much that it will explode. And uh, because of that, they have imposed an economy of war and genocide to loot the, uh, the culture and uh, basically with the people just uh, being killed, being murdered, and the women being raped uh, in huge numbers and our population being forced to live in the concentration camps. They call camps for displaced people, things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, is to maintain colonialism, which is genocide. In colonialism, we kill a lot of people. Now, also to make sure Africa does not unite it. Because the struggle for free Congo is really a struggle to unite Africa and all African people into a single 
strong nation that will stop uh, invaders coming from Africa so we can benefit from our resources. I'm, I'm yeah, sorry, that's where we, um, are. Yeah. Uh, we are, we are we, we come to the end of the program, but um, mm. we will hold another night for Congo only. Yeah, as we as we have spoken tonight. When you're ready. Um, yes, yeah. uh, thank you for coming and and thank, thank you, you for, for watching me. tonight. Mm -hmm. We've been we talked tonight about the crisis in Djibouti and we talked about a little bit in Congo, but we continue inshallah next programs. Thank you for watching, for me as Ali and my colleague. We say Uhuru to everyone. Yes. So check us in Uhuru News. Explain what That's Uhuru means. I don't yeah. Uhuru that. means freedom. It's yeah, those freedom. words that came from Swahili, from Swahili in Kenya during Absolutely. the struggle for independence against the British Army. Absolutely. So Uhuru News. Inshallah, I want to leave you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See you next time.